Citations, everyone. My name is Fucat, and welcome to the Graveyard Shift. This is a brand new PS1 style horror game made by Nurobu, who is a YouTuber and also a game developer. I have played his game called Killer Bees, but I didn't do a very good job at completing it, which is why I haven't made a video on it. It was just a little too challenging for me, but I will make a video on this because apparently this is more of a walking simulator, and it's about the apocalypse. So, uh, haven't seen him upload in about six months, so I don't know if I should call him a former YouTuber, but the games that he makes are phenomenal. They are so good. So if you're into stuff like Kitty Horror Show or Puppet Combo, then these sort of horror games are definitely up in that echelon. So we're going to go ahead and start this right now. A game by Nurebu. Oh yeah, I think we work at a grocery store because that's why this music is playing right now. Seeing it in the screenshots, I mean, it looks like we worked at a grocery store. Yeah, I think we built our way to going somewhere, maybe a graveyard? Who would call that late? It's probably Gus. These mobile phones are so inconvenient sometimes. Better get back to work. Wow. <laughs> How many grocery stores have we worked at already? Okay. Well, uh, let's get back to work then. Night of the Consumers 2. Gotta move the boxes to the front. The delivery truck will be here in a few hours. Okay. Uh, how do I interact? Oh, left mouse? Well, that's... Oh, wait. There we go. And... What am I doing? Oh, launch them with right mouse button. Wouldn't that break whatever's inside? <laughs> okay, whatever. I guess this is the front. Look outside? Sure. Let's see. I can't decipher anything except for liquors. That sounds like trouble. What if drunks come across here? Well, hopefully they got ran over. <laughs> I am so nefarious. But anywho, let's go ahead and move all the boxes over there. Don't have to worry about customers, right? I don't know, I, I kind of want to see the customers in this game. What would they look like in comparison to, like, Night Shift and Night of the Consumers? I wonder where we're at exactly. Must be the U.S. It feels like the U.S. Or what do we have here? Scully Crunch. I think that's the cover for the haunted PS1 disc? Huh. Wait, was there a video of this having, like, a cereal commercial? I don't know, I feel like I could reminisce to that. I could be wrong. Okay, anywho, more boxes over here. Throw them. That one did not throw. <laughs> Kinda just lets go. Okay, that's fine. Let's put that right there. I'm sorry, this is taking some time. That's why I haven't really been speaking, so I had to uh, play some music in the background. Or in this case, this game's already playing some music. So, uh, I guess I could look around. Though I can't really tell what we're looking at. I guess it's like frozen foods? Jimmy Deans? I don't know, I don't eat Jimmy Deans. I don't even know what's inside Jimmy Deans as far as ingredients go. The food makes me sick though. What was that noise? The boxes? Stuff in the storage room already falling apart? I must have left the door open or something. Still, I gotta check this out. Storage. Wherever that could be at. Uh, back here? No, it's just a bunch of items. What is this box? Is that just one huge box? Oh, right here. There we go. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and see what's falling apart. Hmm. I feel so lonely in this game. So much solitude. It's perfect for an essential worker, though. <laughs> Especially with all the uh, social distancing going on. Shoot. Where is Gus? What happened to Gus? I had to call the cops. Oh, I like the tune of this. It really gives off like an 80s vibe. Okay, call the cops. Well, first, I want to go ahead and uh, finish looking around here. 
Our boss office, he comes here only every Monday. I haven't entered here once. Do you do like interviews? I mean, you have to like get in the job somehow. I don't think it's a good idea to go to the back alley this late. Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> Could be a uh, serial killer in the back. So I wonder what is all going to be regarded in terms of the apocalypse. Hasn't said anything about a serial killer, but this really does give off vibes like a serial killer is going to come after you. So we had to go look for a phone, right? It's got to be back here, right? Can't use my mobile phone, apparently. Signal's probably garbage. Freak. The line is completely dead. I have to go find him alone. So I have to go to the back alley? Oh, it's like a Windows 98 computer. So yeah, this must be the late 90s then. Okay. Well, um... Now this place sells a bunch of, uh, meats. They also sell meats here too. That's alright. Let, let's go ahead and continue on. Yeah, this place is so American. <laughs> oh boy. I like this so far. This feels like I'm playing Seven Days. Puppet Combo Seven Days, or whatever that... What is it called? The Back Rooms, that's what it's called. King. Huh. I don't know who the king is here. You freaking gangsters and your graffiti. Oh. Is this... Is this an apartment and a grocery store? That's convenient. So that's why they call it convenience stores. <laughs> okay, what does it say? Dope. Yeah, this is giving off, like, uh... A sense of disquietude in a way that it's like... In a bourbon slum. So, pretty much like... It gives off a representation of the 80s and 90s. Like, suburban... Uh, class of 1984, Candyman, what is this? Hey, stop! Smoking! <laughs> Have you seen a man around here? It's urgent. It's alive! It's going to consume us all! Quit everything! The doomsday is upon us! You have to help me! Please give me some money! I want to stay alive to see this! It's me who will guide the flock. I've given everything up for him. He owes me! Uh, sure, I'll give you money. I heard a man screaming not too long ago. He is down below now, no doubt. Hope you appreciate my benefaction. Yeah. We definitely live around like apartments and stuff. So down in the uh, sewers? I can't go through that. Do I need like a crowbar? I don't know. Maybe it's on the other side then? Yeah, this really gives off, like, serial killer vibes. Down here? No. Nope. Guess we just keep on walking, then. There's, like, two pathways. Okay. <laughs> Down here? Nope. Touch. You said it all to so much. I'm sorry, I've been listening to a lot of Vass recently. <laughs> I think that one's called Touch. I might be singing the lyrics wrong, too. <laughs> Alright. Well, um... Definitely getting foreboding here. Much more than it was at the entrance. Is this a store? No, I think that's just a texture to a door. Anywho. Huh? The manhole is open. That's good. That's what we're intentionally trying to do. Is Gus actually down there? Maybe. I hope he is okay. Well, we'll have to go ahead and find out. Hmm. Alright. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Let's see if there's more that we can do here. Gotta look for more Easter eggs. I guess there's no more, huh? Okay, anywho, <laughs> we couldn't go any further. Yeah, I like this. I don't understand that he'd be down here. 
So I think it's retracting me here. This feels like home. Were you homeless before or something? I guess the sewers were your abode? Maybe this is just a way of like doing social distancing. Gotta get out of your essential job, so you have to uh, go to the sewers to get to a shortcut. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just coming up with like random theories here. Ooh, there's light over there. It's probably someone's apartment, considering how we live around so many apartments. It's like skulls here. Yeah. At this point, sounds like death is imminent. Seeing all these skulls, um, it's giving off sort of like a Goro layer vibe. So, definitely feel like I'm gonna die soon. Okay, so nothing here so far. There's a bunch of skulls laying around. Shockingly enough, that's it. There's like no other uh, bone structures. Alright. Well, anywho, we'll just carry off then. Trying to see if there's anything small around here. Gotta check meticulously for all these stuff. <laughs> My ears hurt. It's specifically my right ear. I don't know why it hurts so much. Anywho. Maybe the volume was too loud when I was playing a horror game. And at some point, there was a game that was too loud. What was it? I cannot hark back onto what that was. I'm trying to think right now, what was it? It's not Yuki Ana. It's much, much further. It feels very recent. I don't know. I'll figure it out later. Uh, isn't this a new area? Or do we just loop? Oh, I can't go up this. There probably isn't a purpose because Gus is supposed to be down here, right? I don't know. Maybe I have to find a box or something because it doesn't look like I can go back up. Nothing. Complete zilch. Is this a door? I, I don't want to click on it yet. I want to continue searching through. I don't want to miss anything that's probably worth looking at. I mean, there's a light source right here. No light source. Light source. No light source. Light source. No light source. I'm a magician! Okay, I don't think we're supposed to go through here. So I guess we'll go ahead and go back because there was pretty much nothing else from here. Is it through here? I don't know. I kind of lost track. Okay, it's not this area. So it has to be the next lane. And we'll go ahead and see what's going to go down from there. If I recall, it looks like it could be a dungeon from the screenshot. Or I can't go through that. Oh no, I just have to go through a distance. Guess the door is uh, for social distancing too. Okay. Yeah, this definitely looks like a dungeon. Must have formerly been like a royal palace. In the middle of the sewers. Wow, and then that gives off some Feed Me Billy vibes. Want me to touch it? So this is like the void? What's with all these things on it though? It's like they put in like broad the noggin and shovels inside it. Either way, I think this thing is living in royalty. <laughs> So fancy out here. Oh, and that's it. The graveyard shift. Follow Nerobu for more. So yeah, speaking of all that, I'm gonna leave a link to credit all of the people that have helped with making their games. So you know, like Scythe Dev Team for instance, John of the Shred, I'll also put a link into his Twitter or SoundCloud and all that too. Or Bandcamp, I don't know. Bandcamp is much better than SoundCloud, by the way. Yeah, that was great. Oh, and speaking of which, John of the Shred actually helped with the music here. Ah. What a coincidence, huh? Tony Hughes. Duck Bubbles. Planning and additional assets. Yeah, that was great. 
didn't provide much context as far as the story goes, but I didn't think it really needed to do that because I felt like it already gave off a strong, powerful message there. But yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this playthrough of the Graveyard Shift. It was made for a game jam, so it was to be expected for this to be extremely short. And, um, not so much else to say about this game. I mean, it was pretty much flawless for the most part. Well, I also want to know what would happen if you say no to the homeless guy. Or whoever it is. It's like someone in a sleeping bag smoking. He's smoking inside the sleeping bag. Is that safe? I don't think that's safe. Supermarket music. Bit orchestra. I like that he gets credits to everything, from textures to music and all that. And the shaders too. So Modus Hout and uh, the creator of the PS1 Haunted Demo stuff. Listen to the music news. Yeah, this is definitely Scythe Dev Team stuff. I like it. Special thanks to Graves. I am not sure who that is. And to the whole HPS1 community. Am I gonna get fired for this? Oh, I just now noticed this. He Easter egged his own game, Killer Bees. Oh, that's great. Alright, so now I'm gonna see what would happen if I say no to this homeless guy. As far as I know, he only cares about how it pans out. I don't think it's gonna change the outcome of what's gonna happen with the apocalypse. <laughs> no. No. I just now realized that he has beer bottles all around him and canned foods. So no. You definitely have money. I hope you rot in heck. Get lost! Alright, well, I'll see you too. Huh, that's interesting. There's no flashlight this time. To be honest, this built more of the disquietude, even though you can still see where you're going. But I don't know if something's gonna come after me. Okay, as far as I can see, it did not change the outcome of the ending here. It's just the only difference is that, well, you get different dialogue, but also you don't get a flashlight, which I guess built more to the atmosphere, built more ambiance. Okay, well, yep, that's it. I did both of them now. Wasn't exactly two endings, but um, it was slightly different in outcomes. Alright, so um, that's pretty much the end of this, and uh, I'll leave a link to everyone's Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, I don't know, in the description below, so you gotta go check those out because they're definitely gonna do more projects in the future, so definitely gonna have to uh, keep an eye on those. Alright, stay awesome, Kitty Sabers.